finally. So have a look under how to save your home. Okay? Right. That, that would be the uh, purple box on the first page there once you enter. Yep. And, and there's quite a, quite a bit in the covenant as well. So again, I say to everyone, please go and read from start to end the whole covenant because it's crucial. It's a key document. Yep. That's how to save your home in the purple box on the uh, first page there of One Heaven. Uh, back to the phone. We have Ron again. Ron? You there? I'm here. Hi, Terry. Hi. I, Frank, you brought up a, a very interesting point where you you said basically that when the birth certificate was registered with the state, it was basically a baptismal certificate to Moloch. Um, yes. I know that we've tried to uh, basically cancel the birth certificate, but we I don't believe we've used the angle of a of a baptismal certificate, do you think we should put it in the decree of nullity or someplace? Uh, yeah, we, we're going to take it to the next level, absolutely. Uh, but but what we're highlighting is, you know, what we discovered with the CESA KB and, and the ritual of baptism, okay, connecting the fact that the ritual of baptism is performed on infants, without the consent of the parents and knowing that it's a ritual of baptism done through hospitals, mm -hmm. there is plenty of evidence through the ritual of baptism on infants to prove that it is a ritual performed without the consent of the infant, without any uh, testing of competence, without any testing of free will. It's a permanent state of affairs. You cannot be unbaptized, yeah? Yep. And you can only be baptized once. So it is the, it is the ultimate fraud of law because there is no remedy. Can you tell me a remedy to to remove a baptism? No, <laughs> I cannot. I can't even figure out how to undo a, a confirmation when I was 12. Right. So because there is no lawful remedy to unbaptizing, how can it be lawful? Right. How can it be? You see, every system, no matter how elaborate, will have weaknesses. Every system. As weaknesses and and the weakness in their system is the the strongest part of their system is their weakest I know that sounds like I'm, I'm playing with words but it actually is the truth the strongest part of the system which is their guardianship powers and all this that they impose on us is their weakest because under the Sesta KB trust created from this there is no remedy now Sesta KVs they don't admit that they exist it's all hidden trust. So the, the cash 22 with the hidden trust is because it's hidden, I don't have to tell you it exists. Yeah? And I can deny. But baptism is in the public. It's out there. They can't hide that. Yeah? No, they cannot. And once you can prove that, that when we are registered at birth, we are also um, uh, taken through the sacrament of baptism. And that any ritual done after that is merely the illusion of baptism, but really only a blessing, only a confirmation of the original ritual, then they have performed an unlawful act, an unlawful act that, they, that has no remedy and that is therefore null and void. We just have to follow through. And at the end, they're going to lose because it is an immoral, unlawful act and Law without remedy is fraud. That's that's been around since Moses was in <laughs> Moses was uh, Out a the baby. Death. Right, right. Okay, so then, really, the birth certificate, aka the baptism, is the hook in our mouth that has us pinned to the ground. Correct. Under their system. Correct. Yep. And that's how they that's how they justify it. Oh, he's got a birth certificate, it's registered over there, you know? Yep. Yep. Okay, we gotta work on that real quick. Well we are. But yeah. Yes. Very good, Ron. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yeah. All right, so next question. Uh, let's see. 
We do have a couple more on the phone. We have Sambo. Sambo, can you hear us? Are you there? Do you have questions? Yes. Hi, Frank. Hi. Great call. Uh, this is Bob Holmes, uh, friend of Ron and Greg's. Uh, I think I made a mistake a couple weeks ago. I talked to you about the Massachusetts Trust. I'm in the state of Washington. Yep. And uh, you mentioned the Delaware Trust. And uh, what I've discovered is basically modeled after that. But I just wanted to point out something. Uh, the Common Law Trust, I know it's their description out of blacks. It refers, uh, share, shareholders are the trust beneficiaries or assessed to queue trust, sometimes known as a Massachusetts trust. They say the same thing. Uh, my point here, and I wanted to ask you a question. Uh, have you, are you familiar with the SESQ V Act of 1707? Yes, I am. Uh, I was reading through this a little bit. I, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it says if it appear afterwards in any action to be brought that such tenant for life was alive at the time of the order made, then he or she may re-enter. And then down towards the bottom of it, it talks about recovering full damages for the profits of the same received from the time that such infant married woman or other person having any estate or interest uh, determined on such life were ousted of the possession of lands, tenements, or hereditaments. Does, would that appear to be a remedy in their own stuff? Well, in theory, yes, but they've done a number of things since then. One, they made the uh, Sessa KV trusts hidden so that we can't, uh, and then, then they've also added into their system the breaking of the roads, like the Col Nidri, the Red Mass, and other ceremonies, which permit them to lie. They've overlaid the guardianship powers, which where they treat us as a minor, which means that the, because we're minors and we do not come of age, because we can be considered infirm and uh, either idiots or lunatics, that they can continue the administration. Because they've introduced the concept of Sestake use, uh, otherwise known as sustenance, they only are required to give us enough to keep us alive and nothing more. They get to keep the rest themselves, which is one of the motives and justifications for taxation. If you get too far ahead, they can come and tax you because under sustenance, uh, the only obligation is that you have enough to live, nothing more. So because of all those additional changes that they have put in place since the SESTA KV Act of 1707, there is no effective remedy. They have removed remedy and therefore the whole system is a fraud. Whole of it. Total and utter fraud. Well, thank you. That was good. That uh, clarifies it a lot. Uh, I guess that's all I had and thank you for your answer. No, thank you. Thank you for the question, <clears throat> which actually gets back to what was covered last week on fraudism. Right, well, thanks. That's exa yeah, exactly. Look, we're not here to, to um, vilify a judge or an attorney or anybody. Look, the vast majority of people are good people. I worked with politicians years ago, and they really believe they're doing something different. I'm sure if you got into a room full of lawyers and judges, they'd actually believe that they're there trying to help the law. They really believe it. But the system was was formed for, for, for corrupt reasons and the system is wholly corrupted on this principle that there is no remedy. I, with many of you, have been looking for, many of you looking for remedy because if there is remedy in the system, we're the first to point out that we should follow the correct remedy. I can now say to you with absolute certainty that when it comes to these core pillars of control, they have deliberately removed any form of remedy. And whilst it may appear superficially in the early structures of this that there was remedy, like 1707, they have deliberately removed them. And because of that, fraudism is now fully alive and kicking in the world today. Yes. 
All right. Thank you, Frank. Um, we've got a guest that uh, this is going to be a couple of questions. I think you can move from one into the other uh, from the same guest over here in the chat. Uh, what about the deed of trust if we are ready to open a bank account? Uh, do we use the one from One Heaven? And also about buying a new automobile, how to use the trust or if the trust is used for buying the new automobile. Absolutely. When you use your trust number, that's why you have a trust number, because you have a have trust. You have a true trust being uh, where the flesh is a trustee, uh, and that trust holds divine right of use, and it's a trust created uh, when you were born, and your life born record is proof of the creation of that trust and proof of the fraudism of the existing system. Because you have a trust, a legitimate trust, because you stay in honour and behave properly, then uh, you can go and use that trust to uh, create a new trust, which is formed when you use that number to purchase a vehicle. A trust will be formed in that process, and absolutely. Um, on the question of... Um, there were two questions. That was the vehicle, and the first one was, again... Thank you. Uh, bank. Bank, account. bank account, same thing. One thing I'll qualify is we, we'd said originally, look, go and get a special deposit account. The reality in their system, as proven by the Patriot Act, is that if they want to take your money, they'll take it, whether it be in Switzerland, Hawaii, wherever. Uh, just go and ask uh, uh, Gaddafi. I mean, if, they, if, you, if, you, if you annoy them, they'll take your money anyway. So it... it just a non-interest bearing account is perfectly fine for trust business. Yes, same thing. Absolutely yes. Right? Okay, yes, great. And then for the EDP process, uh, is the official EDP, EDP process, this is from a guest over in the uh, um, chat, uh, is the EDP process for the state slash provincial level Attorney General or the federal level or both? Well, we've moved the EDP process to offices at a national level and uh, bypass now the states. And, um, you know, that the reason for that was the dishonouring at a state level by state officials of a perfectly correct EDP process. So one of the things I've said is before the end of the year, before the day of judgment, uh, we will raise the system to another level, to international level, like the Hague, like the Pontiff, like the head of the Jesuits, um, within the next three or four months. Because we're still seeing, like I said to you, <clears throat> there is no remedy in their system. They've blocked it out. That doesn't remove the fact that they are obliged to do the right thing, they're just not doing it because they refuse to accept any kind of, of remedy. So I don't want people to be wasting their time. What they get at a national level is a perfected claim of right. And even though they don't collapse the trust, <clears throat> it perfects a, a position where you can send all your bills to the IRS. If they don't collapse the trust and hand back the billions of instruments, billions of dollars worth of instruments, that they've written against you, fine, pay the bills. But you can't have it both ways. So uh, the, the, the answer is yes, national, not state. All right, very good. Thank you, Frank. Uh, back to the phones with uh, Atavia. Are you there? Can you hear us? Yes, hi. Um, I think you pretty much answered like half of my question, but um, I'm going to mention it anyway. Here in America, they... I don't know if you're familiar with the Uniform Commercial Code. Yep. And for uh, private, it's um, private, yeah, private commerce, but keep going. Yes, they claim yep. that um, that that is a possible remedy uh, of taking back rightful guardianship um, of yourself, you know, your body or children and all that through filing a UCC1 form. What is your opinion or insight about that? Well, we... Because, because uh, firstly, to, to perform, it, it is a private uh, private law form. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, whilst you can uh, perfect everything in that private law form, uh, they can choose at any point to deny you the ability to use it. 
and in fact they can go then and uh, take